Derek Brown ran customer service for RDQ. And then a few months ago, he started running customer service for Pirate Drone. That's a big change because there's a huge rivalry between those two companies. Derek explains why he ended up making that change and why his integrity played such an important part in it. I hope you enjoy it. Let's let's dive into the business and because I actually remember that. Um, I remember around the two, 2017 time period where you did, I remember seeing posts from you and I didn't, um, I don't think we were like, you know, Facebook friends at that point. And I just remember a lot of people being bummed out by it. And I remember you saying that it was, you know, a lot of deliberation, but you, you closed the business. Um, what was that? What was that time period like for you? And how did it lead to where you are now? Or did it? Yeah, no, it did. Uh, it was really hard for me to close that store. I, for my family and for myself, I should have closed it a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. um, nobody, not even my family, nobody knows like the the amount of me I put into that. Mm -hmm. And and my entire life, the the biggest struggles that I've faced, the biggest uh, catalyst behind the bad decisions I've made, has been my fear of failure. Mm -hmm. And and closing that bit, like I, you know, I felt like I was had embraced that, and I was past that that fear. Uh, closing the business was a, a a solid reminder that I wasn't past that fear. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I don't show my depression on the outside. I'm just really bad about that. I, you know, um, but I was incredibly depressed. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously my, my wife and kids and friends were super supportive, mm -hmm. but I also had a lot of haters, you know, Mm -hmm. Ha ha, he closed the business, you know, guy I'd kicked out of the store, <laughs> you know, and yeah. posted uh, people that were my great friends that I suddenly didn't hear from anymore because it's nothing to get from me. Right. Uh, I had one, one sponsored driver. I, uh, I, I sponsored him all the way right towards the end and took him up to an event, paid his way in, and then like the next day or two days later he's like oh yeah i'm leaving leaving the team because i'm going to join this other team and i knew it was somebody he'd already talked to and i just that one like cut me deep just like there's somebody i really thought was a good friend like literally took advantage of me on purpose as i as my business was failing and was closing soon uh he bailed shit because he knew the business was closing and um, so just things like that really built up and added to the depression and reminded me uh, that I'm, I'm just too nice sometimes. I really am. And I, it gets the best of me. And uh, the, the reason that FPV really stayed alive for me during that time um, is I had just before, like I think six months or so before I actually closed the store, I had gotten my best friend, Nathan Baker, to, uh, to start flying with me uh, basically i let him break a bunch of my stuff for a while <laughs> and then and, and you know and he never offered to fix it by the way i always right. had to fix it. right yeah. get that right now <laughs> but but i wanted him to fly with me so i kept fixing it and he got lift off and put in a lot of sim time and and then when the store closed that was just him and i just kept kept flying and, and he funded it like not not my parts per se like he helped with some stuff uh mm -hmm. like even our ix12 radios he he bought the two of them and i had to pay him back for mine when they first came out um he did that for that year you know yeah and luckily since then i've been able to kind of take over on that because some uh changes in his life but yeah but 
I, I probably wouldn't have been able to stay in FPV if it wasn't for him during that time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, that the store, the store, the what I what I learned there and the contacts I got there and understanding the behind the scenes industry. Yeah, from that that point of view, really helps me do what I do today. Uh, not just as a customer support, but also handling wholesale accounts. So when I'm dealing with mom and pop shops, uh, local hobby shops, I understand where they're coming from. So I'm going to do what I can to help make it work for them. So the store closed in 2017. And what was the, take me on a timeline from, you know, the right after the store closed into eventually you started working for Tyler. Like, is it how yeah, much time elapses? <laughs> you really do. Uh, so oddly enough, I know we're going to get to the West Coast, but at all, all these weird changes or sudden changes in my life happen at West Coast Throwdown around that okay. time period. I closed the store right before West Coast Throwdown 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a few months later, I went into my old employer, uh, which was... Uh, telecommunications we didn't we didn't call people but we received calls like customer service for sure. uh, big huge companies we would take all their customer service and even uh, chat stuff for you know makeup and all kinds of random things and i uh, handled a customer service team for a couple of those big accounts i i, I just focused on sales and brightening people's days you know and mm-hmm. uh, either way they took me back with open arms um, they made some commitments to me that they chose not to follow through on. And as the year, as I had been back there about a year, it was just a lot of the same old stuff I had dealt with last time I was there, uh, empty promises and, uh, and, and the main owner making it clear that she felt that everybody there, uh, including me was replaceable. She just treated people like that. And I, uh, the stress level was crazy. I ended up going into the hospital. I got, uh, shingles at 37 years old. <laughs> yeah, uh, from stress. From stress, they said. Yeah. Uh, so the wife and I had agreed at that point that it was time to quit that job and and try and find something in the industry again because I was happy when I had the store. I was happy doing that, helping people and and just playing with toys all day, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I put in my notice a few weeks before West Coast Throwdown 2018. <laughs> and so I had a lot of spare time right before the event again. And uh, shortly after the event, I made a, a post on my personal Facebook, just talking a little bit about my past. Um, I had 20, 20 years of customer service experience. And then the last 10 years was more on the managerial side of it. Uh, and then owning the store, just you know, all this stuff I, I was mixing in and, and just talked about my passion for the hobby and, and just said I'm looking for work in the hobby. And I a, a lot of people reach out to me, but I needed something that I could also support my family with. Right. Uh, and I, I feel like I was offered a lot of really cool opportunities uh, you know, there's a couple of companies I still think highly of and hope things go amazing for them. Uh, Ripped Quads is one of them. Uh, Travis Riddle, uh, you know, that's one of the people that reached out to me and um, a lot of other people that we, we all know. But I needed something, uh, an actual full-time job. Sure. And so after that post had been out a month or so, uh, nothing had turned up, and there's another call center that happens to be a few hundred feet from my house. Uh, well, more than that, but it's not far. Right. And I spoke with my wife, and I was like, "I because we're struggling at this point. I hadn't worked in a couple of months. I had some residuals from – I still have a bunch of leftover RC parts from the store and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wasn't cutting it, and, and so I told her, well – it's time to, to bite the bullet. I'm going to go over here to this other call center, and I know they'll hire me. I was, you know, in uh, right. administrative at the other call center in town. So, uh, and literally, I said I was going to do that the next day. 
And then that morning, the next day, uh, my my best friend again, Nate, <laughs> tags me in a post that Tyler had put out that they were looking for a customer service person, basically, mm-hmm. uh, and that it could be remote. And I got tagged in that post a few other times. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. And I, I talked to him and David uh, immediately. He only spoke on the phone. And um, David... David has been so cool. He's been really transparent about like how he felt then and then how he felt while I worked there all the way up to how he feels now in hindsight, because we still talk often. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was not cool with having a remote person take over customer service. He did not think it would work whatsoever. Um, If you, you ask him about it now, he's got nothing but good things to say, but but to Tyler's credit, uh, he's the one that took the chance. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was actually really upset with me when I quit that I didn't thank him in my post for that opportunity. Which made me not want to edit the post and thank him anymore because he wasn't saying nice things. Right. Um, but to me, it was reminiscent of when he was on the show with you and some other things like that that he's done and and not another name came out of his mouth except for mentioning his mom from the beginning um when any of us that were on the inside of this know that david carried that carried rdq you know when it comes to customer service and day-to-day operations you know sure tyler carried it uh financially and all that and and with the the whole spirit of how he started it but it it hurt david and and you know tyler crane and even myself that none of us were mentioned for the huge success he had had in the past year and i didn't really think anything of it of not mentioning him in my post because i didn't want to talk about him at that moment because he had had been difficult in that last week when I finally left uh, earlier than the notice I gave. Because um, the notice I gave was conditional. You know, I said there's there's two things that I request, and I will stick around this next two weeks. I will do everything I can to get your team as best they can ready for for this. Uh, so I had a lot on my shoulders at the time. Like I don't even know what what they what they did. Um, I, I said you'll you'll not do anything that makes my job more difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, let me let me do my job, and I will continue to do it 110 percent, like I have from day one. Uh, number two, you're not going to talk down to me, like you have a habit of doing all of us. Uh, if you can handle those two things. I've, I've got you covered, man. You know, I don't want to leave anybody hanging. I, I appreciated the opportunity. Uh, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that, that lasted less than a week. Uh, he had messaged me a few times and said things that were clearly talking down to me or, you know, putting me down in his, in like what he thinks is a sly way, like I didn't get it or something. But come on, man. <laughs> I, I knew what he was doing. I chose to ignore it, chose to ignore it. And then on the last day I worked there, I suddenly didn't have access to the main email that I would normally look up. All of my main uh, info, a lot of things I need to answer for the guys that worked under me. Mm-hmm. I just didn't have access suddenly. And I asked a few times during the day, hey, what's up with this? Hey, what's going on? Anybody know? And then eventually Tyler come in says, oh, yeah, no, that's been changed. You don't have access to that anymore. And I said, all right, it's been great. You've put me down a few times. I warned you not to do that. Uh, You've now made my job more difficult, which I also uh, had requested you don't do that. We're done here. Peace out. (laughs) And then, you know, I left the chats and everything. And, um, yeah, and that was that. And then he started messaging me like crazy. I don't even – I ignored a lot of it. Uh, It's not – Nothing nice to say. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> so, you know, you, this industry is, and, and we can talk a little bit more about this, but it's full of rivalries. 
and it it seems like there's you know there's there's the there's TBS and Road Riot and there's uh, Tyler and Surge right and they've got this you know epic monumental struggle that they go through on a regular basis. Um, did did Tyler know that you were going to work for Surge or did that happen after the fact? No, he definitely did not know that. Okay. So, I, I intentionally, I knew that would complicate things because mm-hmm. I felt that he would be incapable of separating that from my integrity and my ability to do my job. Sure. Uh, so I, I did not want that to be public, mm-hmm. uh, but I did know that was, that was where I was going. To be clear, okay. um, Sergey, I just I just like helping people, man. So all these different groups I'm in, when I see something I can do to help out, I you know I, I like to do it. And I was in the pyro flip group, and I would occasionally message Sergey because uh, I remember one time in particular he was having trouble. Um, he was trying to do something to help a customer, and the way he was trying to do it was way more complicated than it had to be um, if you know your way around the back end of the store that he uses. Uh, So I messaged him real quick. I was like, hey, uh, if you do this, this, and that, boom, boom. And he was like, oh, wow, thanks. And I remember that kind of being one of the cracking moments because he was like, oh, it pays to have an RDQ guy in the the group or something like that, he said to me at the time. And uh, so, you know, we, we joked around back and forth, but somewhere along the line, I don't know, like six months ago or so, he was like, you know, I really hate seeing you work for that guy. If, if you, uh, you know, people people really love you in the hobby, you know, if you, I've, you got a home here if you ever want it, sort of a thing. Like, I don't remember his wording. Uh, but he, he said other things along the way that made it clear, like that he was totally open to that. Mm-hmm. And then he, he contacted me in in july which at this point uh i was wanting to to leave them already yeah uh, because of nefarious things that i saw going on on the back end that i didn't want to be a part of Uh, so i was already looking for a way out Mm -hmm. uh, while still doing my job 110 percent you know and and sergey messaged me and he's like hey i really do need you now (laughs) <laughs> you know, like yeah. for lack of a better uh, whatever he said, but mm-hmm. uh, he had some changes coming up uh, that are still coming up. Uh, one of those big changes, Armitan recently announced that we're going to be handling all of the the USA uh, warranties. Yeah, uh, cool. which I yeah, yeah, and, and I'm a Armitan team pilot. I've been on the team a couple years now, okay. so me and Chris already know each other well and. So Chris was ecstatic about this change. Chris was one of the only people that knew before it was announced that I was yeah. going to Pirate because we started talking about the Armitan program uh, early on. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, eventually I was just like, all right, let's talk about this for real. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and we got on the phone and we talked a couple more times and then it was just finally like, all right, you know, we're, we're going to do this. And... The other cool thing, man, Sergey is so amazing. Not not to love my boss, but uh, yeah. he really is. Like he made it super easy. Uh, I I had paid vacation coming up for West Coast Throwdown mm-hmm. when I still worked for REQ, mm-hmm. and I felt bad about taking that vacation and then giving my notice. Like it just didn't feel good, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I had earned that time, like you know, but but still, Sergey offered to give me that same paid vacation for WCT. Uh, that way, there was n- nothing bad for my family. So everything, I, you know, I was like, I never missed a beat. Right. Um, so that was huge. Like he didn't have to do that, and uh, he's. He, he covered expenses for me to go down and visit him right before West Coast Throwdown. He's offered to fly me and the wife out. Me and David both begged and pleaded with Tyler to to get me out to Orlando a few times so that I could see operations and understand how 
how the guys do things so that I yeah. could just have a better perspective on it. And the only reason I ever went to Orlando is because X-Class bought me a plane ticket. I went out there with Reiner for an S-Class race. So I got to see uh, operations briefly, but um, this is just a whole a whole new breed. Like I, I'm, I'm so much more comfortable business ethics and morals wise where I'm at. Like I, I align with the, with the, how Sergey does things and sees things, and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a huge blessing. What is and, you know, without getting into specifics of the, the former place, um, what are some of the things that you that you like about working for Pirate Flip? I never have to question the intent behind uh, one of Sergey's actions. Mm -hmm. He's always transparent. Like, I, I, I understand why he's doing things. There's never like a, what? Why would you do that? I, I ask him and he'll tell me if I'm not sure. Um, at the with Tyler, it was never that way. He is not in, involved enough in the in the industry. Hasn't flown in a couple of years unless he just flew recently. But last I knew, had like he he just didn't get it and he wasn't interested in hearing input from other people. And and most of us know and understand that the greatest leaders are the people that surround themselves with other experts and leaders that know their own things. And that's how you build a successful team. He wanted to micromanage everything, which is a lot of why David eventually left and why Tether Crane left amongst many other reasons. <clears throat> and then eventually me leaving. Uh, that was a big part of it. With Sergey, it's the opposite. It's like mm -hmm. he constantly asks for my input and my opinion because he respects and appreciates my background and you know, and the way that I see and think about things. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, even if he doesn't ask for my opinion, he's always open to hear it. If I have an idea or anything like that, he's he's on it. He's like, oh, okay, you know, and, and it's just, it's so relieving. Like I have, I feel like I, I have some control over improving the future of Pyroflip, of Pyrodrone. Like I, I can invest myself in that and know that I'm going to see a return on that. Mm -hmm. I never felt that at, at, with Tyler, ever. Um, and, and then, you know, clearly while I was working for Tyler, uh, he had purchased half of Rotor Riot. Mm -hmm. So that became a whole other animal. Uh, Chad and Drew were 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 rad. I never never had an issue with those guys. They any anything I needed, they were both on it. And they just like David, but David way more than them, constantly told me how much I was appreciated. Constantly, just like I had no question how those guys feel about me and how David felt about me. Uh, and, and that's a, a huge thing, you know, people, it feels good to hear that stuff. And they, they made sure that I heard it often. Uh, anything that Chad or Drew ever said they were going to do, they did it. You know, and I, I realize other people may have, might not have had the same experience, you know, or, or something, but I, I was behind the scenes with these guys and, and saw all the inner workings of not only how they dealt with other businesses on the back mm -hmm. end, but how they communicated with each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And and there there should be a, a a balance in that too. But being on that back end also allowed me to see some things that I didn't agree with that were being directed at Rotor Riot. Um, you know, at, at one point, uh, Tyler specifically, and this has nothing to do with the the store itself, but Tyler specifically, as a half owner of Rotor Riot, uh, and he did this more than once. He would suddenly message our main chat and say, "Don't ship anything for Rotor Riot," and we're like, 
what, what do you mean? Like I have, I have emails coming in still for Rotor Ryan. I, uh, and he never caught on to that. I still answered the emails because he never mentioned that. He never said not to do that. So I still answered the emails because, you know, I'm like, oh, I got to answer these customers. But other than that, the crew would just pack up the packages and have them sitting there until he eventually came back and said, okay, we're good. When during that time, he's essentially extorting Chad to try and restructure restructure their original deal or something and and holding it over his head that we're not shipping out any of your packages until you give me what I want. Mm-hmm. That's basically what was happening. And that made me sick to my stomach the first time it happened. Like, even now, it, like, makes me shake. It was just... I I can't even imagine how Chad and them felt like yeah, and then for me to be stuck in the middle of it, and then I'm the one, the guy that has to answer the emails saying, hey, why isn't my package shipped? And I'm so I'm worrying about all that, but luckily it was cleared up within a day every time this happened, mm-hmm. uh, so I never really got the backlash of that. But um, you don't you just don't do that to people, man. You know, Mm-mm. there's Mm-mm. It's the right way to do things and the wrong way and. And that was the first day that that the path I was on turned out. When the first time he did that, I, I was already was not it, happy about things. But was it? A, I mean, how, how, I guess one of the questions I have is, you know, how did you come to the determination that there were negotiations going on in the background when those package shipments were frozen? Because I have an open and transparent relationship and friendship with a lot of the other people that are involved in the middle of this. Okay. It was telling when you know you made your you made your post in RDQ, and then you made a post in Rotor Riot, and your post in RDQ disappeared. Um, yeah. It, 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 it was gone. It, it, it didn't last, I think, but a few hours. Um, your post in Rotor Riot, uh, not only did it stay up, and I'm pretty sure it's probably still up, um, but, you know, both, I, I think Chad chimed in to say how much he enjoyed working with you. Um, so it does sound like the working relationship was, was really good there. Um, yeah. You know, did did you feel like you took anything away from that relationship that you had with Chad and Drew and the rest of the Road Riot team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Chad Chad is also a, a wealth of advice of of knowledge, um, and he you you can ask him about the most random random life or business questions and. And he's got some sort of advice. And he'll tell you up front, like, look, I might not be able to do this. I might not do this, but this is how I feel it should be, you know. Uh, And so he's been amazing for that. Drew uh, is a a more interesting subject. Um, He, I saw something from him that I hadn't seen from somebody that I really looked up to and respected in the hobby in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was, and I never talked to him about this, but I'm going to talk about it now. Okay. That was that he was tired. You know, not that he had lost any love for the hobby, but him and I talked a lot about him coming to West Coast Throwdown, about the crew coming out there. And, and, and you know, him and I talked openly about Uh, how he feels about the hobby at that time and about, you know, events and things like that. And, and I could just, it kind of broke my heart a little bit. Like I could, I could tell that the, the recent at the time, and this goes back to the Seth Eakin thing and that whole fake rotor riot group, that was causing a lot of despair for him and just making, making the hobby almost sour for him in a way more more about business than pleasure. And I just, so that has stuck with me. Uh, I know, I know. And I feel like that's nowhere near the same now for him. I feel like it's been reignited. Things are great, 
but I was mm-hmm. seeing that, and it just really made me think about what these people on the keyboards. They don't think about how they're really affecting real people with real lives that really love the same hobby you really love. People don't think about that and how they're affecting people, and 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 that's something I took away was seeing how it affected Drew, somebody that a lot of us look up to, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I um. I have seen and heard a similar story, you know, about the tiredness, um, and it was really good, you know, recently. Uh, I took my son, um, my middle son down to Orlando. Um, he, uh, for his 12th birthday, he wanted to go to Harry Potter world. And, um, uh, you know, we, we, for, for whatever reason, our family has made a big deal about the 12th birthday. And so, um, uh, I'd taken my oldest son to a Seahawks game. He's a huge Seahawks fan. I, we're on the East coast. Don't know why he's a Seahawks fan, but he's a Seahawks <laughs> fan. Actually, I do know why he's a Seahawks fan, but that's another story. Um, but my my middle son, um, he loves Harry Potter, and he uh, wanted to go to to Orlando to see to go to Harry Potter World again. And so um, I reached out to Chad and said, "Hey, we're coming. Um, could we could we possibly just come stop into the the shop?" And not only did we stop into the shop, we actually made a full day out of it. We spent five, six hours with him. Um, with him and Drew, they, it was on a Saturday, or was it, it was on a Sunday. And Chad just happened to be in town. They made time for us to get out there. And, you know, they literally, we left that afternoon, or that evening, and, you know, we went flying with them. We got to see the DJI <laughs> system for the first time, which was just mind blowing. Um, we did some, we did some filming in the studio. Um, Logan, my son got to like, you know, see all these things. Chad actually, you know, handed us a ton of parts. I mean, it was just like, it, it was, it was an unbelievable act of, of graciousness. And, uh-huh. you know, just for, two ran literally random internet people kind of walking in off the street basically um That's and the, the thing that stuck with me um was number one you know uh chad spending so much time with logan i mean really enjoyed it logan got to fly chad's quad and i mean it was, it was great um but drew also encouraging logan you know you gotta go hit that gap over there and you gotta do this and <laughs> come on hit, hit power loop man come on let's go never disarm um it was great but we left we left that evening and my son looked at me and he, he was like dad if we go home now this trip was the best trip i've ever had um, oh man yeah, so it was just you know, as as a father, as a dad, like, yeah, <laughs> as a dad, that is that is something that you just, I mean, you, you know, um, yeah, and and so that was you know, and then the next day we went and absolutely crushed Universal Studios. It was it was a phenomenal trip. <laughs> um, I will cool. forever treasure that time that I got to spend with him. Um, but yeah, I you know it was I, I had. I had heard and seen things from Drew um, that there was a tiredness there, and, and and it definitely seemed to be reignited when we were when we were there. But I still, to this day, I, I can't thank them enough. Um, uh, so that's awesome. Having integrity means that you have to make hard decisions sometimes. In this case, I think Derek made the right decision. Uh, whatever you believe, whichever side of the fence you fall on, the things that he says are very impactful and very heavy and uh, should not be considered lightly. I'd like to take this moment to thank my patrons. Uh, They support this show, they support me, and they keep this thing rolling. If you'd like to support me and and be a patron, uh, you can find a link in the description below. Our next episode, we're gonna be talking about West Coast Throwdown. It's a lot more fun, it's a lot more lively, and uh, honestly, it's a thing I think that I would love to see. Just that Oregon thing, man, that's a long way to go. Anyways, I'll see y'all soon, bye.